Hey guys, welcome back to Rage Gaming. Let's just get into it. Bone Spirit was meant to be the best build for Season 5 for us in Necromancer mains, but that comes with some problems alongside the massive positives. So let's focus on the positives of the build that I put together here. It's capable of dealing 5 billion damage in one button press. As you can see against the training dummy here, while completely unbuffed by any elixir or incenses or anything like that, I'm just standing here, I press Bone Spirit during my rotation, and then it hits over 2.9 billion. With the Imprisoned Spirit aspect, your Bone Spirit then echoes a second explosion at 70% of the first potential. So in that case, this was another 2 billion hit. That's basically just to say that I could min-max this setup and get over 5 billion per cast, but you know, that's in training dummy footage, so let's look at real gameplay. Here I am just working through a tier 120 build with this build for an example. I'm still able to regularly hit it for 2.4 billion with the echo follow-up of 1.5 billion, which simply means I'm regularly landing 4 billion per cast as I'm killing the boss pretty damn comfortably with lots of time to spare. Now I have mentioned downsides and you might expect me at this point to say that we're really squishy. Well, I'm not. Standing here in town, I have over 61,000 health. I'm still working on my gems at this point. I've just managed to get the max life in my armor, but I still need to get more overpower in my weapons, so I could even hit harder. My gear isn't fully upgraded either. Most of it is at 8 out of 12 compared to 12 out of 12, so I'm not even fully min-maxed. I'm missing like essence regen on my chest, ideally. I'm missing CDR on the offhand. You don't need a perfect build to reach incredible results, but this is is getting pretty close to it. I'm thinking I could push to 80k max life or more alongside better uptime for my bone storm and the damage reduction that provides on top of the shield I get. So yeah, I can easily make this stronger with more time. So this build then in my current setup can push 5 billion per spirit cast and yet at the same time, huge health ball, damage reduction and shield. The downside here is that it's bone spirit, which means it sucks for the main new content, which is infernal hordes. No matter how hard you hit or how survivable you are, your corpse central is going to be on cooldown at the wrong time, bone spirit needs a second to wait, and the explosion radius is small. Meanwhile, other classes don't stop putting their output out. Killing the elites and the actual events is no problem for me. It's killing the packs of mobs that spawn and spread out and sometimes they're rangers. Actually putting them together to kill them can be annoying. It's actually in the earlier waves of the hordes that I feel so slow. To be specific though, the issue here is not clearing the hordes by any means. It's just being efficient and effective at farming aether and the events to get big numbers to get more rewards at the end. We can absolutely do this. It's just, you know, not as efficient or rewarding as other classes and builds. By comparison, I think Blood Surge is going to be way better in terms of necromancer choices you have for Infernal Hordes farming, even though its single target is going to be really bad and the boss part's going to suck. So I'm going to follow this video up with a build to do with farming hordes on Blood Surge as a heads up. Anyway, here's the real bad part of the build. To run it properly in this really strong way, you're going to need two mythic uniques, the Harley Quinn Crest Helm, as I'll explain in the gear section, and Doombringer. Shaco's is just an obvious choice. Cooldown reduction, max resource, max life is everything we want. But Doombringer is the one that I had to pick up because ultimately we need more survivability with this build. And this brings the most efficient version of that without giving up our chest piece for Tyrials, which would lose us Shielding Storm, which would suck. So Doombringer provides us flat damage reduction and potentially an extra 20% for five seconds when it procs. It's pretty damn good. Then, you know, you get a massive max life increase. It's worth sacrificing the offensive aspect. It is necessary in my opinion, at least in tier eights in Infernal Hordes. And you know, 130 plus pit. Now I imagine a lot of people are gonna be upset with those words, but it's a fact. If you wanna play Bone Spirit properly, you knew going in that it's one of the most gear intensive builds in the game. It has a really high base level to get functional and to get to the highest level, you're gonna need Mythic Uniques. Don't fret too much though, I will provide you with the alternatives. It's just not gonna be as tanky. Now, before we explain the build, I just wanna tell you how to play it. In short, you just make sure you have 235 essence or higher before you press Bone Spirit. That's because the Banished Lord's Talisman gives you a guaranteed overpower after spending 275 resource. So by pushing our max essence as much as we can, that means we're always overpowering. Further, you need to make sure it's always a crit, so you need 100% crit chance in the build, which I'll explain again how to do in the build section. So with those basics in mind, here's what you do. You decrepify the target and maintain that debuff. You corpse tendril pull to get the crit chance and damage. You pop bone storm for the self buff, cast bone prison on the target to apply vulnerable, get a load of max essence, and then cast bone spirit. Now on top of that, you'd be trying to press raise skeleton at least five times before the biggest spirit casts for the corpse eater buff. This can be tracked by the stacks on your bar, even pre-set up before the fight at four stacks, cleverly if you want. From here then, you just recast Bone Prison, Bone Storm, Decrepify, Corpse Central, maintain all these things, and spam Bone Spirit at the highest 
essence every time that you can. Here's a little trick for you before you set up on a boss. If you aren't at 275 essence before the next fight begins, you could throw out a few decrepifies on nothing. It'll give you 10 essence per stacking up to that 275 if you need to. So pretty helpful. So with that showcased and explained, let's cover the build. So let's explain the build starting with the Book of the Dead, starting with the Warriors, which is on upgrade two. This is to generate corpses, which we're absolutely going to need for lots of different stuff, a Paragon or just the resources themselves. And we're going to make the skeletons a lot more tanky as we go through this build. For skeletal mages, you want to go bone sacrifice for overpower damage to maximize that. But if you're having serious essence problems, like you can't get to like 80% or higher when you're casting your bone at prison to recover your resources, then you can still consider sacrificing shadow for the essence regen increase and the max essence too. Lastly, golems under iron sacrifice for the crit strike damage increase, of course. Okay, time for the skill tree. We're going to be very quick on this. Two levels into the basic bone splinters is important. It increases the damage that you deal with your splinters from Path of Tragul. Very minor thing, but why not take the efficiency of that? On the next tree, we go full hued flesh. We need corpses to be spawned, maxing our essence with unliving energy and the damage we get with our core skills with imperfectly balanced. On the next tree, we go one point bone prison all the way to ghastly. This means as we press our bone prison, it's generating a ton of essence. The more targets, the better. And it's making enemies within vulnerable for eight seconds. This is our lead source of vulnerable, which I'll mention again in a sec. Obviously, we're getting benefits from corpses, so grim harvest, so we can just get to fuel by death. So we're getting the damage bonus from that. On the next tree, we go for a point into Cryptify all the way to Bahorin. This is to help us reset the cooldown. Mostly, most importantly, bone storm to get the shield damage reduction, crit strike chance, all the good stuff. But applying this to enemies means they're dealing less damage. And with high ranks, you can get it up to 27.3% less damage, like me here, which is a big chunk of DR. As we curse everything, we take Amplify Damage, and we're also taking Death's Embrace to take less damage from close enemies and deal more to them. On the next tree then, we go one point cops tendrils, not to plagued, but instead to blighted. The reason for that is that we're generating vulnerable through our bone prison. So since that's going to generate vulnerable, there's no reason to have plagued corpse tendrils. Therefore, we get the huge perk of Blighted, which basically just spawns a bunch of blood orbs, which is going to keep you healed up, healthy for the crit chance that's going to provide, get you towards Fortify and so on. It's just straight up better. Speaking of Fortify, we max out Necrotic Carapace for the massive Fortify that provides. We max out Bone Spirit for the damage, enhance that so that when it crits, it's reducing the cooldown by seven seconds. It's always going to crit. Dreadful is the one that you pick for the Essence Restore after you press Bone Spirit. Anyway, we have the Bone Passives. We take one point into Serration and then full commit to the rest for damage you want as many points in serration as you can get because there's gonna eventually be a point where you have enough crit strike chance from your gear you no longer need to run inspiring leader as much this requires your healthy to give you the crit strike chance increase where this is just going to give you crit strike chance increase but at smaller numbers. So once you reach 100% crit chance, you can start to pull out of Inspiring Leader and put it into Serration and maybe other things for more utility. For now though, I have two points in Serration and then three out of three Inspiring Leader, maxing out Bone Storm of course, and also Fired Essence for the final point and the key passive. Right, pretty big one, the Paragon. I'm gonna be trying to be quick on this, but things will be different for me compared to you depending on your setup. But the main thing I want you to be concerned about is resistance to all elements. Obviously, you need to be capped on your resistances, and Paragon can help you achieve that. As you get higher level in your gear, you upgrade them, you get better gems, you'll need less from the Paragon for your resistances. So keep track of that yourself. Keep it in mind, you may want to spend things slightly different, but here's my Paragon board. For the first board, it's the same as it was before. Amplify, we're cursing everything with the Crepify, it's a big damage increase, but it also provides a bonus to all magic nodes within range, meaning on the starter board, hey, the damage nodes are gonna get juiced. Really efficient. Obviously, we come down here for as much max life as possible, super important, and we go to our next board, which is still Bone Graft for obvious reasons. Here I'm efficient with my points, spending minimal where I need to. We come around to the Glyph, which is still corporeal, we get movement speed, better physical damage, which is great, and again bonus damage to magic nodes, so extra bone damage is nice, but I can't afford to spend loads of points to get to the more of it, and I don't need more extra resistance to all elements. So I wish I had more Paragon points than I do have, but yeah, minimal here. Coming up to the right then, we come through Reinvigorate, not wasting points on Essence on Kill, coming through Calcified and tapping into that for a bit of Bone Critical Strike damage, and coming all the way up to Bone Graft, coming through Entomb, which is important, that's an extra 4% Bone Critical Strike chance to help you always crit with Bone Spirit. Anyway, we come through the Glyph, on the way out we do come up to Tenacity and pick up all the max life nodes, but then it's the third board, which is Flesh Eater still. We come straight through to the Glyph Socket, Grab Gravekeeper. This is going to give you more damage for every close cop, so the longer you're in a fight, the better. But further, we get to pick up Targeted for extra damage to Elites. And Gravekeeper actually juices that up a little bit, which is nice. 
We work our way through and around, picking up Flesh Eater on the way out, going through Stifle for the extra damage and crit strike damage, and being efficient with the points to get to the next board, which is still Scent of Death. Here we come straight through, minimizing the points we spend, not even picking up Preservation, because I'm at the armor cap and well over it. So we come straight through to the Glyph Socket, which is Dominate now. This is going to increase the damage you deal with Overpower, and when you overpower an enemy, you get 5 seconds to hit even harder with the follow-up Overpower. So it's usually not your first Bone Spirit that hits the hardest in a fight, it's the second one. Anyway, I try to get as much willpower around this as I can afford to. This may be where you cut corners yourself. Coming down through to Center Death, wishing you had more points to pick up Shadow Resilience for more max life nodes around there, but can't quite afford it. And coming down to the next board. This is a efficient dump board, but an important one. This is Cult Leader, which means you're gonna have Dead Razor as your glyph. Big reason for that is that it's gonna juice up minion damage and damage reduction modifiers. So, it's actually enhancing custody by a massive amount. 40% damage reduction for our minions. It means our Reapers actually get to live, so they're more regularly generating corpses for us and existing, so more max essence thanks to Requiem. This is really important, and I can't stress enough that your minions are going to die without DR. So this really helps, but not only that, it does mean the minions as they attack targets, it scales damage by 15% times. That's a massive number. So in single target, your minions attacking the boss makes you hit it harder, which is very nice. Anyway, Way, we're minimal with the points we spend there so coming straight through to the last board and this is an important one it's bloodbath 70 percent times increased overpower damage is absolutely required so i have to be efficient with my points to have enough to get all the way here so we come round to the glyph socket which is essence for the crit strike damage and the bonus of that i get the benefits of a bit more damage while fortified which is nice but then we come up and around grabbing powerhouse way more overpower damage and damage while healthy and hey extra overpower damage nodes here bringing us down to bloodbath for the big juicy damage increase so if you need to spend points slightly different to me to get your max res go for it but just know i've tried to be as efficient as possible with this and it's pretty tight Right, that brings us to the big one, the gear section. I'm just going to explain what I'm running and why, what the alternative I would run if I didn't have that mythic unique, and give you the goals to aim for. So, for the helmet, I'm running Harley Quinn Crest. Obviously, we need loads of max life, max resource and CDR. This gives everything. This is the most important mythic unique you could pick up. So, if you're going to craft one, go for this one. However, if you don't have it, you run a normal helmet with the same kind of stuff. Max life, max resource, CDR if you can get it. The aspect could be a cult dominion for extra warriors, for extra requiem, which is nice. Or probably better, blood getters, which is going to empower you with the priest to make us hit harder. So there's your alternative. On the chest beast, we're running Shielding Storm. Between Hardened Bones and Shielding Storm, I found that Shielding Storm is giving me much more survivability just because of the massive barrier that I have and the fact that I'm trying to have Bone Storm up as much as possible. Hardened Bones, though, at 25% DR is obviously a great alternative, and we would run that on our legs if we weren't using a unique on our legs. In any case, on our gloves, Serration, no-brainer, more damage. For legs, it's Blood Moon Reaches, giving us extra overpower damage to those that are cursed. We're cursing everything that we can with the Crepify. Boot it's the new boots, Path of Tragul, Bone Prison Traps, enemies and spread spl bone splinters around. As they get hit, it gives you extra max essence. The more bone splinters, the better max essence. This is required. Then we have Doombringer. Doombringer is max life by mass amount, a straight damage reduction, the proc damage reduction, all stats is fine, the heals, whatever. This is survivability. As you go into Infernal Hordes tier 8 and, you know, you push 120 and above in the pits, you need more survivability. You're going to need Doombringer. Like I said, you could consider Tyrael's as a chess piece instead, but I think Doombringer is just more efficient and we get to keep Shielding Storm. If you do not have Doombringer, fair enough, run a one-handed sword or hammer, or mace, I guess. The sword gives you crit strike damage, the mace slash hammer gives you overpower damage, and then you'd run what you'd expect. In Intel Max Life, Crit Strike Damage, or Overpower. It gives you an extra offensive slot for aspects. On that one, I would just go for something that enhances your Bone Spirit. Maybe Swelling Curse, it'll help you Critical Strike Chance. For the offhand then, we just have a focus. This is Imprisoned Spirit, the thing that causes Bone Spirit to echo if it goes off in a Bone Prison. Absolutely required because it means we go from hitting 3 billion to 5 billion. For the amulet then, it's what's causing us to actually overpower, Banish Lord's Talisman. You ideally want a top roll with plus three core skills if you can get it. For rings then, we have Grasping Veins, the crit strike chance and damage is obvious. 
and then finally Requiem, which I still don't have a top roll of, which is going to give us more max essence per active minion. So active minions could be our skeletons, but it can also be Bone Prison, which I believe counts as six extra minions while it's active, which is pretty silly, but hey, I'll take it. So those are the aspects and my alternatives. Let's now talk about affixes. Make sure you've got the armor cap, 92350, and then make sure you've got your resistances, most important thing. Outside of that, on your helm, you're looking for max life, max resource, and cooldown reduction. On your chest, you want essence per second, max life, and macabre skills. As you can see, I don't have a perfect chest. For your gloves, it's Intel, Crit Strike Chance, Core Skills. We can't do anything about our unique legs or boots or Doombringer. But again, on your weapon, Max Life, Intel, Crit Strike Chance, or Overpower, great options. Amulet, we can't change. For rings then, it's Intel, Max Life, Crit Strike Chance. Same thing on both of them. Finally, for your offhand then, I don't have a perfect one. What you want is Crit Strike Chance, Max Resource, and CDR. That's to help us have Bone Prison and Bone Storm as much as possible. Cool. All right, now tempering. We can't temper the helmet, but if you were able to do that because you don't have a mythic unique you'd be doing the same for the chest maximum life assuming you have armor cap then for the second and all these slots you want corpse tendrils to be as big as possible so on my gloves i've got corpse tendril size increase but on my chest i've got curse size increase for decrepify those two are the goals for that one on the gloves we're just going for bone spirit damage obviously we can't temper our uniques though and if you don't have doombringer in your one hand weapon you're going for bone spirit damage and either bone spirit explosion or extra chance to proc your bone splinter which will help you with max essence. I would prefer the bone splinters, but you know, I roll badly. So same thing on the offhand, bone spirit damage and bone spirit explosion slash bone splinters chance to proc again, which would be the preferred thing. Again, can't temper our unique. So for the rings, we're going for bone spirit damage and casting macabre skills restore primary resource. This is important. When you press bone spirit, that means you get resource back essence instantly. Without this, you're not going to function. You need it on both rings. If you don't have it on both rings, you brick the ring. The bone spirit damage is obviously fantastic, but even more than that is getting the resource back when you cast Bone Spirit. So yeah, that's the tempers. Finally, master working targets. You want to increase your max resource and cooldown reduction as much as possible. Then the priority under that is max life and crit strike chance. I've not really got the best tempering on these. Here I would aim for macabre skills, ideally. Here I would aim for core skills, ideally. On the legs, it's whatever. Max life, or power damage, curse skills, they're all great. On the boots, it's obviously bone skills you want to hit. On Doombringer, it's definitely max life and damage reduction. So you generally aim for the same thing on your one hand. On banished lords, it's core skills, and then either max life or overpower under that. For your rings, it's anything but intel, really. Max life, great. Crit strike chance, great. Bone spirit damage, great. Macabre restore, great. So that's a pretty good one, no matter what you do. Finally, for gems, it's just rubies in everything but your jewelry to increase your max life on armor and your overpower damage on weapons. Then it's diamonds or skulls, depending on what you need in the jewelry for armor and resistances. But there you have it. That's how I'm running the strongest version of Bone Spirit that I can create for Season 5 right now. If you were to give me some time, I could get everything to 12 out of 12. You know, fix those couple affixes that I've got wrong. Maybe actually get some greater affixes on the right thing. But that's up to us and time, you know. I've pushed as fast as I can to make this build for you. I hope this information is just what you were looking for. To show you what's possible at the upper tiers of a build like this. Next though, I'm going to show you the power of Blood Surge. And how that's the better option for Infernal Hordes farming. Specifically at tier 7. That's where we're going to get all our gear and resources the most efficient pushing tier eight is just kind of like fun challenge and so i think blood surge is going to be the answer for necromancers and i want to showcase that next so that's what's coming up until then i've been hollow you've been you thank you for watching Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye